Hey guys, so this is a video about how to use logarithmic, logarithmic, if I can say it, differentiation, and, and what is it anyways? Okay, so I think it's easiest to show you this by just doing an example. So here's like a classic case where you might want to use logarithmic differentiation. So the idea behind this is think about taking the derivative of this. You could do it, it's just going to be kind of complicated, right? Because you've got product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, chain rule, it's just a lot. So logarithmic differentiation is like another way that you can go at this by using properties of logarithms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write directions out for this as we go along. Highly recommend you do the same on your end. So first things first, you want to take the natural log of each side. So those are my directions. And now I'm actually going to do it. So I've got the natural log of y equals the natural log of x times the square root of 5x plus 1 over x plus 9 to the 7. Okay, now from here, and let's see, we're taking the natural log of this whole thing, right? So from here, what you want to do is you want to use properties of logarithms to simplify, or maybe to expand would be the better way to say it. So use properties of logarithms to expand. So maybe you're rusty. So I'm going to show you some properties of logarithms. So if you're in my class, you might also remember we did some review exercises on this. Highly recommend you check those out now. Um, so here are kind of a set of properties. You can pause the video and write them down if you need them. So what I want you to do is use those properties to expand this side as far as you possibly can. So actually, I want you to pause the video, do this to the best of your ability, and then hit play when you're ready. OK, so now I've got the natural log of y equals, okay, so lots of stuff going on here. First things first, um, so anything that's being multiplied on the top will get a plus sign, so I can break this up as the natural log of x plus the natural log of 5x plus 1 to the 1 half. So stuff that's in the numerator will usually get a plus sign. Anything that's in the denominator will get a minus sign. So then this becomes minus the natural log of x plus 9 to the seventh. So stuff on top plus stuff in the bottom minus sign. You can always count on that. And then these exponents, I can bring them out in front. So let me clear some space. And so let's just write this one more time. So now I've got the natural log of y equals the natural log of x plus 1 half times the natural log of 5x plus 1 minus 7 times the natural log of x plus 9. And I even managed to squeeze that all in on the same line. OK, so this is exactly what you want to do. You want to expand as far as you possibly can. And then after you get to this point, what you want to do is you want to implicitly differentiate. So implicitly differentiate. If you don't know how to implicitly differentiate, I have videos on that. So be sure to check those out. Those will probably be helpful for this. So let me clear some space. And let's go through this. So this, if I take the derivative of this side, this will be 1 over y dy dx. And now as I move over to this side, derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So then this will be plus 1 half. And then the derivative of this will be 1 over 5x plus 1, all of that times 5. And then for this last one, so let's maybe let me go with bigger stars just so that you can see. And then this last one, so then I've got 7 over x plus 9, and then all of that times the, the derivative of the inside, which is just 1. So here's all the work that kind of goes into this. And so now if I just want to clean this up and make it look nicer, so this will be 1 over x plus 5 over, we'll call this 10x plus 2, I'll distribute that, and then 7 over x plus 9. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to solve for dy dx. So we're, we're that's part of implicitly differentiating. So to do that, I'm just going to multiply both sides by y, so I'll clear space again. And I'll rewrite this as dy dx equals y times all of this stuff. 
Okay, now, one other thing that is just common when you are doing this, so I know it's implicit differentiation, you can usually just leave the y here, but when you're using logarithmic differentiation, it's usually not standard to leave the y, you actually go back and you replace y with whatever the equation was. So now I wanna take this and I just wanna slide it into the y. So my final answer here is gonna be x and then the square root of five x plus one over x plus nine to the seventh. And then I've got all of this other stuff here. And that would be my derivative. So now here's kind of the, the, the question, right? Is this easier than taking the derivative of this? I mean, I, I kind of think so, um, because taking the derivative of natural log is, is pretty straightforward. Having to keep track of, did I take the product rule correctly while I'm taking the quotient rule with all the chain rules, that's just a lot to keep track of. This kind of allows you to, to break things up and then you usually have much more manageable chain rule type problems. So. I know that sometimes it, you, you look at this and you're like, oh, I'm never going to use this. But I think there are times where it, it starts to make more sense as you get to practice it a little bit. Now, there are cases where you really got to actually use um, logarithmic differentiation. So this problem right here, this one you can't actually do using like a derivative rule. So the derivative rules that we have, we have one for a to the x. And then we have one for x to the n, but we do not have x to the x. <laughs> so this we have no rule for. And so when that happens, sometimes just using logarithmic differentiation will help you get the job done. Now I highly recommend if you have your, your problem in terms of f of x, just restate it with a y. And now to do this, so we do the same thing. So we take the natural log of each side and natural log, natural log of x plus 1 to the x. And now in this case, when I'm actually using my logarithmic properties, I'm just going to bring this out in front. So there's not a whole lot of simplification I can do in this case. Okay, so there we go. And so now I can go ahead and take the derivative of this. So this as is, I could not take the derivative of, but this I can take the derivative of, and I can just use the product rule right here. So. In doing this, this becomes one over y dy dx, and now I'm gonna use the product rule here. So the derivative of x is just one, so this will be one times the natural log of x plus one. And then I leave the x alone, and I take the derivative of the natural log of x plus one. So if I take that, that will be one over x plus one, and then the derivative technically of the inside function is just one. Okay, so let me make some space. And so now I've got one over y dy dx equals the natural log of x plus one plus x over x plus one. And then you can multiply both sides by y. So I could re replace this y here. And then here's actually just one other tip for you. So as you're working through this, so sometimes you might find that you actually don't have a problem where you can substitute the y easily. So only do this if you can substitute the y back easily. Um, in this case, we can, right? So I can just replace now y with x plus 1 to the x. It will be obvious when you cannot easily do that, I guess. So just a heads up. Sometimes you might have some issues and it won't be, you, you'll know right away. Okay, so that would be the, the derivative in this case. So that covers it for logarithmic differentiation. I, I definitely recommend you practice it a bunch. Um, if you are one of my students, it tends to be on the exam and it is frequently forgotten. I think a lot of people see it and then I'm not sure what happens, but <laughs> uh, make sure you practice it. Have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll talk to you guys next time.